Hey everybody, today is the release of Plasticity 2025.2. As usual, there's a ton of powerful new modeling features and some great enhancements to the viewport. So this video will be a bit of a sort of visual release notes for the most important changes that have come in this release. There are a ton of minor enhancements, so we won't be able to go through everything, but we'll be able to go through the things that are most important to you and your modeling experience. So let's just get started. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the new environment and material system, uh, which I think makes the plasticity viewport much a much richer experience and better for like showing off your work to teammates and clients. And so um, this model is has been styled and we're using sort of a flat matte cap shader for now, but if we go into render mode, we're gonna see a few new options. First of all, we have a bunch of new HDRIs, which allow us to change the lighting um, of the object and we have these options which allow us to tweak the rotation of the HDRI. Now I'm just going to go for like a very simple mat cap for now or a simple environment for now and let's focus in on this object. Now if we go into the assets tab we have now a bunch of uh, texture based physical materials so I will just sample a few of them for now. Um, brushed copper, let's try. So you can see that there are like textures. Let's see, what else is there? Car paint is one that I really like. Um, so these are textures, normals, uh, albedo, and you can assign things to objects and then you can tweak some of these textures. This is use tr using triplanar mapping. You can change the scale of objects. That might be a little bit easier to see on this uh, gold foil. You can make it larger or smaller, and you can change some of the blending and orientation of it, uh, as well as tweak some of the colors if, uh, if that makes sense in your case. So this catalog, of which is, originates from like Material X, is a, a pretty versatile um, set of materials, including some very sci-fi looking sci-fi looking things uh, that should help uh, communicate your ideas to your clients and teammates I think much more clearly and just make cooler models in general. Now in addition for added realism let me like turn the intensity of this up a bit uh, take a look here I'm gonna pull up the plasticity appearance settings so we now have ambient occlusion and you can, ambient occlusion is a screen space GPU shader technique to kind of create these fake shadows in the corners and crevices of objects. It adds a sense of realism. There's basically two, uh, two settings you can do to tweak the intensity, the size of the shadow, as well as how quickly it falls off. Um, in general, the AO radius is, uh, it is proportional to your system unit. So for example, if, the, if you're in meters versus uh, centimeters versus millimeters, the radius is basically a percentage of your unit. So it's somewhat adaptive to your model or environment size, but in general, you will probably need to tweak the AO settings for most scenes. It won't just like magically work out of the box. So AO, as well as shadows and the HDRIs, these are all in render mode. You can optionally, in performance settings, turn on ambient occlusion in shader mode. So let me just uh, go to like this shader, for example. So right now, um, we have ambient occlusion on. It's off by default. You can turn it on. If you have a very powerful GPU, like for example, an NVIDIA 3060 or above, so not, two th not 2,000 generation, but 3,000 and above, I think it's totally fine to turn it, in, turn it on in shader mode. Uh, but it is expensive, it doubles the number of draw calls. So, you know, uh, it's better on smaller scenes, uh, meaning fewer objects, less geometry. And yeah, powerful computers, powerful GPUs, I would turn it on. So I have a nice computer, I have it on by default. Okay, the next feature is a studio only feature. It's powered by Xnerves. Um, it's one of the most exciting features that we've added in the last two years, but it's primarily for people who do surfacing work, class A style surfacing, so it is a bit of a niche tool. So I'm just gonna like sculpt some very simple 
surfaces right now. Um, and, well, I don't know, something like this. Okay. Now, normally if we wanted to blend these two surfaces together, we might loft, we might run x nerves, we might run square, okay? And we can change the continuity and so forth. But a classic bread, bread and butter feature of advanced surfacing, especially in vehicle design, is um, surface alignment, where you take an existing surface and you match its continuity, continuity to another. So here we can match to like G0 by default, or we can set this to G1, and we can set this to G2 if we want. This is obviously a very simple model. But uh, now, the, now the surface is G2 continuous to, uh, to the existing one, to the sort of static surface. We have a lot of options that allow you to um, increase the degree or spans of the surface that's moving so that you can better achieve continuity. We have advanced analysis tools where you can measure and visualize G0, G1, G2 continuity. Um, and so along those lines, let me just set this to, I guess, well, maybe G0 is easiest. So these two uh, bodies would so I can join them if I, want, if I wanted to, right? I just ran the join command and now this is one body. But one thing that we want to do in general when we're doing advanced surfacing is and analyze the bodies that we're working on. So for example, we can measure the, um, the continuity between two surfaces. And if we start out at G0, we can see because of the align command, these things are exactly, or, you know, or w certainly within tolerance, uh, G0 of each other. But it's not G1, and we would expect to see um, a G1 as well as a G2 deviation between these objects. And so you can see at a glance um, that the measure continuity command will show you a spike plot of the deviation in G0, G1, G2 curvature. You can change the scale to make it easy. And then there will be a label with a blue line indicating the maximum deviation and green or red uh, indicating whether you've passed uh, the system's tolerance checks, which are basic uh, standard tolerances that are used in the concepting phase of class A surfacing. Along these lines, we also have a uh, measure curvature function, which for any given edge um, allows you to um, measure the curvature. Well, there's no curvature here. Uh, measure the curvature of edges as well as curves. So a uh, quick result, a quick example here is if we make, you know, a relatively simple spline, and then we measure the curvature of it. We can that can help you inform, um, you know, just producing higher quality curves and surfaces. These features are just the start, and we'll be adding a lot more sophisticated interactive curvature and deviation analysis in future releases. But um, but yeah, for now it is. I think finally possible to really say that Plasticity is a class A, at least the studio product is a class A modeler. Um, just FYI, these curvature combs and deviation plots are part of Indy. Only the align command, because it's powered by X nerves, is part of studio. Cool. Along those lines, speaking of advanced features, um, there are two new shaders, okay? One of which just shows you the orientation of surfaces, for example, the surface normal is pointing in the positive direction here and the negative direction here. Um, this one, which we can call the topographical shader, is a really interesting one. This is very useful specifically for reverse engineering. Plasticity has pretty decent reverse engineering tools at this point. But what it allows you to do is um, project uh, lines aligned either with the world axes or the current construction plane in you know one, two, or three directions. And you can compare a surface to, another re to a reference object. So a surface to another surface, or a surface to a mesh, like a scanned mesh that you imported as an OBJ into plasticity. And then you can tweak the density of this mesh just as it is useful for the specific tasks that you're working on. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the new uh, powerful Boolean options that have been added 
to plasticity. So let's look at this simple example. This is like a cube, but what we have are a bunch of individual objects that are intersecting. Now, one common operation uh, when doing advanced surface modeling, not really class A, but um, more complicated mechanical style parts, is um, finding for finding overlapping regions, solid regions within a bunch of uh, distinct overlapping sheet bodies. There is a new option in the Boolean command um, called region, okay, which for a bunch of intersecting sheet bodies finds any number of like enclosed, um, fully enclosed volumes. So you can do this, run the region command, and now we're back to a watertight solid. So we started with this overlapping sheets and we ended up with a solid. Okay, for this next example, I wanna look at a similar situation where we have a bunch of overlapping sheet bodies that do not enclose a volume. So often when we're doing surface modeling and class A style modeling, we wanna mutually trim a bunch of surfaces and we don't wanna do, do all the tedious operations that are required uh, for that. So, so there have been enhancements to the imprinting tool. So if you run imprint, so we're gonna imprint both the target and tool bodies. So we're gonna mutually imprint all these bodies and we're gonna do completion, meaning we're gonna extend edges all the, all the way to the body's boundaries. At this point, we can select the individual faces that we want and we can just for example, uh, invert the selection and delete them. And now we have um, a, bunch of, a bunch of mutually trimmed bodies, which are still distinct, but we can join them and now we have one body. So that um, has just, what used to be a fairly tedious operation has now become very easy. And the final Boolean thing that I want to show is, so we we're, let's work with the same sheet body. I'm just gonna, um, I will create this new body right here, the sphere, and let me run the Boolean command on this. Now, it's always been the case that you can subtract a solid from a sheet, it just sort of punches a hole in the sheet, but the Boolean command now has an advanced section. These are um, quite advanced tools, but it allows you to sort of treat the target or the tool, so this is the tool and this is the target, you can treat them as if they're different kinds of objects. So in this case, the target is a sheet body and the tool is solid, but we can decide to treat the sheet body, for example, the target, as if it were solid on one side of its normals. So for example, as if it were solid down here, and you can see that this makes this kind of stamp or embossing operation in this sheet, or on the opposite side of its normal, and the embossing happens in the other direction. Now, you can do that for both the tool and the target, and the exact combination of these material side options with the operations allow you to do a lot of different combinations of operations, although many of them are redundant in practice. You can, but uh, this allows for quite a few very cool, um, operations when doing sheet modeling in plasticity. Oh, actually along those lines, let me do a fillet here. We now have for edge fillets a new tension option, which is useful in some cases for just tweaking the shape of blends, uh, of simple edge blends. Um, yeah, okay, we don't have time to cover everything, but there's two uh, kind of small quality of life enhancements that I really want to call attention to because I think they're useful for most users, okay? So the first one is that sometimes when you have, these are two different bodies, okay? Sometimes when you have two different bodies, uh, topologies overlapping, like for example, these, there are two edges here, you can see it says two edges, but they're in exactly the same place. And so it, it is hard to individually select one. Sometimes you wanna select this one or you wanna select this one. There's a couple different techniques to do this in plasticity, but one of the new ones is if you type, if you hold down Control Shift and click, then this little pop-up will allow you to select all of the topology that's under your mouse cursor from the current camera perspective. And you can see the outline is indicating the parent body that owns that topology. So now this is the bottom one, as you can see. Now that applies also for like general overlapping topology, like for example, the face behind this face from the current perspective of the camera, 
uh, you can control shift and click and bring up this selection box, which will allow you to select all topology under the current mouse pointer. Now, you could always do this in plasticity by holding down left click and using the mouse wheel. And you can still do that today. It's been enhanced. I think it works a lot better than it did before. Um, but uh, this option is better for people who use tablets or don't like using the left mouse button and the wheel simultaneously. And the final thing I want to show is uh, there is it is now possible to select rows and columns of CV holes by holding down the Alt modifier. So in point selection mode, if you hold down Alt, you can select this entire column, or you hold down Alt, you can select this entire column, and your usual like Shift adds to the selection and Control uh, removes from the selection. So this is a, a, a fraction of the features that are available in today's release, but I think this is, an, this, this is the most important step for most people. Okay, and one really important announcement slash heads up. Um, in mid-August, the price of Plasticity Indie will be increasing from $150 to $175. That's a $25 price increase. The cost of studio and renewal will not be changing, and the cost of upgrading will be adjusted very slightly. Uh, so you have, from now, 30 days, approximately, uh, to get Plasticity Indie at the old price. Studio price isn't changing, again. Um, and we are raising the price because the price that Parasolid is charging us has increased in Q3 2025, unfortunately. But even at $175, Plasticity is by far the most affordable CAD product on the market. And I hope you also will agree that with all of the powerful modeling tools we have, it's also one of the most powerful CAD tools at any price. And it can sit alongside um, tools that cost many thousands of dollars a year. So we will be uh, raising the price approximately August 15th formal announcement to come soon. So if you're about to purchase Plasticity, now is the time, the next 30 days more or less, is the time to do it. Take advantage of all the cool new features and save $25 while you still can. And thanks a lot for your support.